Well, praise God. This is Apostle We're welcoming you to our February Focus 2023. And we're looking forward to getting back into the Word of God again today for the day, today's truth that God is going to share with us and the Word that He wants you to focus on today. We believe that as we meditate on the Word each day and spend our time in prayer and in supplication to the Lord, he will move mightily in our midst and he will keep taking us from level to level and from realm to realm. So as we get into the word of God today, let's focus on what God is saying to us today. Today, the word of God that we'll be sharing with you is the comforter, our inside helper. I want you to understand that the comforter who is our inside helper. And so we want to understand what the Bible is saying about the comforter. Now, the comforter is the Holy Spirit, and God has a lot to say to us about the Holy Spirit. One of the things that we need to understand is we're living in the age of grace. And in the age of grace, the focus must be on the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus said some very powerful things about the Holy Spirit that we need to receive and understand because I think uh, many people are neg neglecting actually the true ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we have relegated the Holy Spirit in disrespectful terms, calling him an it and that and something. And the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is and just like the Father is. And it is his time during the age of grace during this dispensation of grace, it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we need to focus on because the Holy Spirit is the one that has been sent to help us and to get us to the place where God wants us to be. So we're going to get into the word of God today, and we're going to see some things that Jesus says about the Holy Spirit. And as he says these things about the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand this truth that Jesus is telling us exactly what the will of the Father is concerning the Holy Spirit. So let's go to our scripture today, John chapter 16. We're going to be in verse 7 and then verses 13 and 14. The Bible says in John 16, 7, Jesus is speaking here and Jesus says something very interesting. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Packed within these three verses of scripture is powerful truth. It's powerful revelation. And we need to understand because this is coming from the mouth of Jesus. And this is the time that you and I need to flow and to focus in on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. For it is when you and I are being led by the Spirit of God and being filled with the Spirit of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to have his ministry in our lives, that's when we get elevated into the kingdom of God. It is the Holy Spirit that does the work. Jesus made the sacrifice, but it is the Holy Spirit that enforces the work that must be done in the lives of us as Christians. And so we're going to see this as we get into the verses of Scripture. Look at verse 7 again and listen to what the Word of God says. Jesus is speaking and he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. So Jesus is saying what is about to come out of my mouth is the truth. Now that word truth, it means truth. It means reality. It means what is real. This word, the definition of it, it talks about the unveiled reality lying at the basis of and agreeing with an appearance. 
It's the manifested veritable essence of matter. In other words, truth is the un unveiled unrelying basis of everything that is matter, everything that, that appears. Truth is what makes everything real. And so when we're talking about truth, we're talking about what is true in itself and that it's pure from all error or falsehood. In other words, what Jesus is saying that the words that I'm about to say to you, they are true within themselves. They are pure from all error and falsehood. There is no error in what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is the un un unveiled reality lying at the basis of everything that you're going to hear. This truth is what actually undergirds everything that you will hear from me. And so when I say it, it is pure from all error. It's pure from all falsehood and it will work. It will manifest itself and it will bring that reality. I want you to understand the truth is that word which makes it real. Come on and listen to what the word of God is saying. So Jesus is saying, look here, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying to you. I'm giving you words that are pure from all error and falsehood. So if these words are pure from all error and falsehood, then everything that Jesus says is true. It's going to work. It's not a lie and it will not fail. His word will never fail. Well, then when we get that from Jesus, then we need to listen to what he's about to say. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. What is the truth, Jesus? Tell us the truth. Tell us what is the will of God. He says, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus says that it is expedient for you that I go away. Now that word expedient, it means, watch this now, it means to bring things together into one place for the benefit of someone. In essence, now notice what the Bible says. This word teaches us expedient. It means to be profitable. It, be, it means to be to your advantage. Come on and listen. It means to bring together to the benefit of another person. So when Jesus says it's expedient for you, he is talking about, come on and listen to what the word of God is saying here. He is talking about it is to your advantage. Come on. It is to your profit that I go away. Well, now listen, this, this is powerful because notice Jesus is saying it's better for you. It's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. How could Jesus say that it is to our advantage that he leaves us? And, and so I'm quite sure the apostles were, were thinking, what in the world? How can that be to our advantage that you leave us? And, and so here, Jesus, he is the, the son of God. He, he has worked miracles, signs and wonders. He's preached the word. He's ministered under the power of God. He's raised the dead. He's healed the sick. He's brought revelation knowledge. He has ministered to multiplied thousands of people, to multitudes of people. And he's done supernatural things in the midst. He's taught the disciples so many things about the kingdom of God. And yet here he is telling them, it's to your advantage that I leave because I want to send somebody else. So it is what in the world, how in the world could the comforter be an advantage or be more profitable for me than Jesus? Well, let's get into the word. And let's see what the Lord of God, the Lord Jesus says here. He says, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. The word comforter is the word parakletos. And that means one that has been sent to comfort a person and to encourage you and to exhort you. It, it, it talks about one who has been sent to give an aid of any kind, any type of aid that you need. The comforter is able to do it. The comforter will comfort you. The comforter will encourage you. The comforter will exhort you. He'll give you aid of any kind.
This term comforter means a legal advisor. It means someone that'll plead your case. He's an advocate for you. He's one that comes forward in your behalf and he represents someone else and who he is representing brings that power into your life. I want you to understand something. The Holy Spirit being the comforter, he comes forward on our behalf and he represents us to God and he represents God to us. I want you to see that he is the Holy Spirit. Now notice what the Holy Spirit does. He has been sent by Jesus to witness to the, the, the life of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is this, this comforter and his purpose is to witness to the life of Jesus and to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit undertakes Jesus's office in the world because Jesus is no longer in the world as the God man. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father. And so here the Holy Spirit has come to undertake that office that Jesus has left and he has come to do the same thing. Jesus says, I will send you a comforter and, and this comforter is one like him. He is the same sort of comforter that Jesus was not a different type, but the same type. He is God and he is come to be a blessing to you and I. Now it's interesting because the comforter who the, is the Holy Spirit has come to live in you. Now notice something. Jesus said it was to our advantage that the comforter would come and that Jesus would leave. One of the greatest advantages was that Jesus was limited to being in a physical body while he was on the earth, even though his body was sinless. And even though his body had the power of God manifested and flowing through him and the authority of God flowing through him and manifesting manifesting through him, he still could only be in one place at one time. When he was one place, then the only way that he could get to another place at the same time that he was in uh, one place, he would have to speak or send his word. But physically, he could only be in one place at one time. When Jesus was up in the mountains and he had told his disciples to go over to the other side. Uh, and so they got in the boat and they began to go to the other side. And then Jesus came down in the, in the midnight hour and then he began to walk on the water. And so now he was there walking on the water, but he was not on the boat with his disciples. I want you to understand something. Jesus was with us, but the Holy Spirit, Jesus says he will not only be with you, he will be in you. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. So now what has happened is this, the Holy Spirit has come with all of the authority of Jesus, all the power of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus, the ability of Jesus, everything that Jesus is, he has come to represent him in the earth through us. But now the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us where Jesus used to walk with us. Now the Holy Spirit is inside of us. The Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit has come to live inside of you and I, and he's not going anywhere. So the spirit of God is the manifestation of Jesus on the inside of us who gives us the authority and the power. You remember what Jesus said in John 14, 12, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go into my father. The reason why he said, because I go into my father, because he was going to the father so that he could send the Holy Spirit and everything that the Holy Spirit was doing through Jesus. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes to us, he's going to do the same thing through us. He is the spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead. He is the revealer of truth. He is the spirit of God. He's the almighty spirit of God. And so now notice what Jesus says here. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, 
I will send him. I will send him. I will thrust him out. I will send him. In other words, when he talks about sending the Holy Spirit, he is sending the Holy Spirit out with a mission. He has been thrust out quickly. The Holy Spirit has been sent to you and I. Remember when Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you without a parent. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and he will cause you to be the sons and the daughters of God. And so here the Holy Spirit has been sent with a purpose. He's been sent with a ministry. He's been sent with a message. And so now we're going to see what is it that the Holy Spirit has been sent to do? What is it that the Holy Spirit, Jesus sent him out to do? Well, the Bible says this, he says, I will send him unto you. And then verse 13, the Bible says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. So he's going to be the spirit of truth. So that means everything that comes out of the Holy Spirit is going to be truth. It's going to be the reality that lies at the basis of everything that is matter. You need to understand something. That means everything that is created, truth is, is the reality that causes that thing to be what it is. It's truth that causes wood to be wood. It's truth that causes metal to be metal. It's truth that causes the air to be air. It's truth that causes causes the sun to be the sun. It's truth that causes the moon to be the moon. It's truth that causes man to be man. It's truth that causes everything that God has created to be what it is that he created because everything was created by the word and the word of God is truth. Thy word, O oh God, Jesus said, is truth. And so we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he is the spirit of power. He is the spirit of revelation and everything that the Holy Spirit reveals, he will reveal it in the truth. I want you to see that. So we need to understand everything that you hear from the Holy Ghost is going to be right on. He's going to give you the exact things that you need to see and that you need to hear. Now notice what it says here in verse 13. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he's coming, he's coming. Believe me, I tell you the truth, he's coming. He says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So now here, the Bible says he's going to guide us into all truth. Everything that is truth, everything that Jesus has spoken to us, everything that Jesus wants revealed to us, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into all truth. So that means then that everything that the Holy Spirit shows you is going to be the truth. So that means when the Holy Spirit shows you things through the gift of the discerning of spirits, what Whatever he shows you is the truth. So if he shows you a demon that's behind or motivating a person in acting, that's the truth. If he shows you an angel of God that's moving in behalf of one of the Christians that are going to be blessed of the Lord, then he is showing you the truth. Whatever the Holy Spirit says is the truth. When you are speaking with new tongues and you're being motivated by the Holy Spirit, the language that you are speaking and the things that you are speaking, it is the truth. The Bible talks about he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh divine secrets or mysteries. It says, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. It says he speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So when you're speaking in unknown tongues, when you're speaking in tongues, you are speaking the truth. You cannot lie when you are being led by the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues. Your tongues are the truth. You remember when the disciples got filled with the Holy Ghost and they came down and they were all speaking in other tongues and they were speaking in different languages and dialects that the people that were in Jerusalem at that time were speaking. But the Bible said they were speaking and magnifying God and they were speaking and declaring the mighty works of God. See, they were speaking the truth and the people that were listening to them in their own languages and dialects heard them praising and magnifying God and speaking of the things of God. And all of that was truth. So the Holy Spirit has come and he is the spirit of truth. And when you are with the Holy Ghost, when you are led by the Holy Spirit, you will only speak the truth. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost is what God has for you and I, because he is the spirit of truth. Now notice what it says. 
Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. And so he is your leader. The Bible says the word guide is the word a guide. He's a leader. He leads the way. He is a guide. He directs us and he rules over us. He doesn't rule over us with a, with a dictatorial uh, way of ruling. He rules over us by authority and our submission to him. And now notice what it says. He's our guide and he's our leader. He will guide us into all truth. He will direct you into all truth. So whenever you're in a situation where you need to know what is the truth about this situation, you go to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will will direct you. He will guide you. He will show you the way he will lead you. Now, one of the great things I like about the Bible and what Jesus is talking about when he talks about the Holy Ghost is that the Bible said he will guide us into all truth. He is our leader. He will lead the way he will guide us. And it's one thing about a leader. A leader is meant to be followed. And when a leader goes forth and people are following him, say, for example, if you're going through a forest or you're going through some woods and, and, and you're following the leader. Well, it's the leader that's going to come in contact with all of the bramble and the bushes before you do. And what the leader does is the leader attacks the bramble and the bushes and carves out a pathway so that they that are following the leader can come in the footsteps of the leader and they don't have to beat down and they don't have to come against all of the obstacles because the leader who is in the front is already come over those things and destroyed them and defeated them so that a pathway can be made for those to follow. Well, this is the same thing that the Holy Ghost has done. Every time he leads you into something, he always attacks the thing that he leads you into and he breaks it down and makes sure that that thing will submit to you when you follow his steps. You need to understand something here. Being led and guided by the Holy Spirit is the way to peace. It's the way to victory. It's the way to power. It's the way to revelation. It's the way to mock in the blessings of God because the Holy Spirit will lead you in the pathways that he has already overcome, overruled and destroyed so that you can walk in that beaten pathway and walk in the victory of God. This is the Holy Spirit and this is what God wants him to do in your life. So now notice what it says here. And this is something that preachers need to understand and listen. It says in verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now look what, look at this is what the Holy Spirit does. Since he's our leader and he's our God, then we're supposed to follow him. It says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So now it says he won't speak of himself. Notice the Holy Spirit submits to the Father and he submits to the Son. The Bible says he will not speak of himself. If all of these ministers would listen to this and take heed to this, how many preachers do you see on television and preaching at large stadiums and they're all about themselves? They're all about their own ministries. They're talking about how much money they've got. They're talking about how, how many riches they have and how many clothes they buy. You look at the television, you look at uh, the, the ads and you'll see them posing with pictures uh, for their prosperity with their rings on and, and they're in front of cars with their feet in front of Rolls Royces and everything. And there's nothing wrong with having these things. But when you're speaking of yourself, when you become the focus of what the message is instead of the Lord, then you have offered yourself up into the spirit of idolatry. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit does not speak of himself but whatever he hears, that shall he speak. So the Holy Spirit, whatever he hears the Father say, then the Holy Spirit will reveal it unto us. See, as ministers, there are so many preachers that are preaching what God has given them, but they want to bring it out and they want to make the, uh, uh, the evidence that it was them that came up with it. No, no, no. Everything that any man or woman of God has ever gotten from the word, it has come from the Holy Spirit. They didn't know it until the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. I don't care how much studying you do. I don't care how much praying you do. I don't care how much reading the Bible you do. Everything that comes forth out of that word uh, where it is knowledge comes from the revealing of it by the Holy Spirit. You don't get anything on your own by yourself. You are not capable. The Bible said the carnal man is not even subject to the word of God because he cannot be subject to it because they are spiritually discerned. It is the Holy Spirit that discerns things.
things. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals things. And if you're not being led by the Spirit, what you're getting is not coming from God. It may be coming from the devil, but it sure is not coming from God. And so he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears the father say, that shall he speak. That's why you can always trust the Holy Ghost because he's only going to tell you what the father is saying. And it says, and he will show you things to come. And what I like about that word show you is that he will tell you, he will declare to you, he will announce to you. Come on, somebody. He will tell you of things. He will bring a word to you. He will inform you. Come on and listen. He will show forth and he will declare to you and he will teach you. This is what the Holy Spirit does. His ministry is to come to us and to declare to us, to show us and to teach us. Come on, somebody. And to show forth things to come, things to come, things to go, things that are coming along, things that are moving in any direction. In essence, what it is, he talks about this word, things to come. The word come means that which is coming in the future. Yes, that's what I said. He will show you things that are coming in the future. You need to understand that one of the ministries and one of the powerful ministries of the Holy Spirit is to show you the future. No, you don't have to go to a horoscope or go to power readers and tarot card people and all of these uh, wicked people that are listening to the devil, fortune tellers, you can get the future revealed to you by listening to the Holy Ghost. He will guide you into all truth. Let me give you a revelation. Let me give you an understanding of how the spirit of God will show you the future. He shows you the future in a prophetic word. Whenever God gives you a pro prophetic word, then that word comes to tell you what God is is about to do in your life. He is speaking to you the future. Come on, somebody. When the Holy Spirit gives you a word of wisdom, a word of wisdom is when the Spirit of the Lord speaks something to you and tells you to do something in order to get a result in the future. And so it is the word of God through the discerning of spirits that will then even, yes, come and tell you the future. And so we need to understand. And then when you're praying in the Spirit and you're praying in tongues. The Bible said, uh, you don't understand what you're doing and you don't understand what you're praying. But then it said, when you pray in tongues, then they say, pray that you may interpret interpretation of tongues. When tongues are being given, you're speaking divine secrets. You're, you're speaking things that could be future events. And when you have the interpretation of tongues coming out to then interpret what you have said in tongues, it can come forth telling you about the interpretation can come telling you about what is coming in the future. So it is the Holy Spirit, not the horoscope. You don't go to the horoscope. That's why they call it horror scope. It is horror that you're seeing. You need to understand, don't listen to the devil. It is the power of God. And you need to understand it. It is the Holy Spirit that's going to show you the future. You want to know what's coming up in your life? Begin to pray, pray in the spirit, minister to the Lord, uh, worship God, honor God, sing and make melody in your heart. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs and make melody in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, he'll begin to talk to you and he will begin to show you things to come. Notice what he says in verse 14. It says, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Listen to this now. He shall glorify me. And that word glorify means to give honor and to give dignity. It means to recognize and praise and give dignity and place a person in an honorable position. Jesus said, this is what the Holy Ghost is going to do. He's going to recognize me. He's going to honor me. He's going to praise me. He's going to uh, put me in an honorable position. He's going to give me a esteem and he's going to give me honor and he's going to invest me with dignity. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's going to ascribe glory and honor to Jesus. He's going to praise and celebrate Jesus. See, this is what the word glorify means. It means to render glory to him and recognize him for who he is, what he is, and celebrate him with praises, celebrate him with worship and celebrate him with uh, adoration. This is what God wants us to do. When you glorify God, 
God, you render conspicuous the glorious divine character and the attributes of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, when you glorify Jesus and when the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus, what he does is he manifests the character and the attributes of Jesus and makes it conspicuous so people can see and understand that this is the character and the, the attributes of Jesus. And so when the Holy Spirit is in your life, his purpose is to glorify Jesus, to glorify his character and his attributes. Notice now his character, his attributes, his power, his authority. That's why, how does the Holy Spirit do that in me? Well, he, he, he releases the divine character through the what? fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit are the manifestations of the character of Jesus Christ. And as you are led and guided by the Holy spirit, he will guide and direct your character to manifest the character of Jesus through the fruit of the spirit and his attributes, his power. That's the gifts of the spirit. That's when the power of God comes and then that manifests what the Lord can do and what he will do. It is the Holy spirit that God has sent to magnify him and to glorify him and to lead you into worship and to lead you into praise. Notice now you're honoring and praising Jesus. We're honoring and recognizing him, not your ministry, not your church, not people, not worldly people, but giving Jesus the honor, giving Jesus the glory and giving Jesus the praise. Notice what the Bible says. And it says, for he shall receive of mine and that word means to receive or take in whatever manner. Jesus is going to give things to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will receive what is given or imparted unto him, and then he will declare it or show it to you. What the Holy Spirit does is he is a receiver of the will of God. He is the receiver of the will of Jesus. Everything that God gives the Holy Spirit, everything that Jesus gives the Holy Spirit, the, re the Holy Spirit receives it, and then the Bible said he will show it unto us. That word show means to tell us, to announce it, to declare it, to tell us of the things that God is doing. He brings us a word. He informs us of, of the things of God. And he foretells us and shows us and teaches us what God is saying, what God is giving him. The interesting part here as we close, I want you to understand when the Holy Spirit receives anything from God, when he receives anything from Jesus, then his purpose purpose is to show it to you, to announce it to you, to tell you about it and to manifest it through you. When you are being led by the Holy Spirit, you will walk in the supernatural power of God. Whatever the Lord has given you to do, the Holy Spirit will empower you with the ability and the authority to do it. Whatever the Lord is giving uh, the Holy Spirit to show you for information purposes, for revelation purposes, the Holy Spirit will tell you, he will declare it unto you, whether it's future events, past events, or present events, the Holy Spirit will let you know. And he lets you know through the word of knowledge, past events, the, uh, the word of knowledge, uh, current events, and the word of uh, future events, the prophecy of God. You need to understand it's the Holy Spirit that's going to show you the things of God. Whatever it is we have of God, he is the revealer of truth. He is our wisdom. He is our understanding. He is our peace. He brings brings everything into our lives. He is our comforter, our paraclete. He's the one that has been sent to help us. He's been sent to help us to do everything that God has called us to do. Whatever you have been called to do, the Holy Ghost called you to do it. And when the Holy Ghost calls you to do what God has said for you to do, then guess what? He empowers you to do whatever you've been called to do. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the comforter. And that's why Jesus, Jesus could tell you and me, it is expedient. It is to your advantage that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And what the comforter will do is he will manifest the glory and the power of God and cause you to worship and praise God. And then he will cause you to manifest the power of God and the character of God so that you can be supernatural and you can manifest and you can be a witness for the Lord 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. The comforter is our inside helper. Praise God. Father, I pray right now that this word has been a blessing to your people. Let them receive this truth. Let them receive the revelation knowledge of God. Let them receive the insight that you have given us about the comforter, our inside helper. He is inside of us. He's not outside. He's talking to us from the inside. And let this revelation rise up. Even now, as I pray, let the people that are listening experience and have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, giving them inside information, giving them inside releases of power and worship and praise. Let them have contact with the Holy Spirit. Let him receive, release revelation knowledge into them so that they can be effectual and powerful in their walk with God. Father, I thank you for what you are doing in this midst. I thank you for what you're doing throughout this month of February as we continue to receive these words of truth. We're focusing on your word. Let signs, wonders, and miracles, let healings and deliverance, prosperity and finances and, and supernatural debt cancellation, miracle signs and wonders come forth now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and give you the praise in Jesus' name, the comforter, our inside helper. Until tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God.